It seems that many people were interested in the video I did talking about bird habitat being compromised for the goat grazing program. Quick recap, this is what the coyote brush looked like a couple of weeks ago when I filmed it there. Full of life, full of leaves, generally speaking, providing valuable habitat. This is what it's about to look like. I know that because this is my footage and I sadly witness it happening every year. It's the exact same spot as a matter of fact. Foliage gone, hiding places gone, food gone. Nests that were protected are now exposed or completely destroyed. And let's be clear, it's not just birds, it's mammals, it's reptiles, it's insects, it's many species of birds, not just one bird. But today we are gonna focus on one specific species of bird. I've become a big fan of hummingbirds in recent years. A pretty big change from filming uh, great white sharks to going to enjoying hummingbirds. But we're specifically talking about Anna's hummingbirds in this case, while also talking about a specific plant. This one right behind me. A couple of years ago, I posted a video showing the destruction that the goats did to a riparian area that just didn't seem to have any benefit whatsoever. And I go back to that place year after year and show that the invasive plants come back and the natives, such as willows and such as the cattails and others, just get destroyed. And they get destroyed in the middle of an important life cycle, their own life cycle and the life cycles of other animals that depend on those plants to be there. They not only depend on those plants to be there, but they also depend on those plants to be at a certain stage in their own life cycles to match the life cycle that the animals that want to use the plants are in. Pretty cool if you think about it. Very, very intricate relationships that have developed. Everything awesome that I just said is thrown out the window when someone says, oh, you know, goats are destructive for a reason. They're a tool. This is what goats do. Oh, it's going to be good in the long run. And you don't make any effort whatsoever to take a look and see if anything that you're saying is true or justified. Now I'm getting angry again. Let's get back to talking about the hummingbirds. Yes, I realize that isn't a hummingbird, but my story with cattails and birds starts with my observation of the red-winged blackbird an extraordinary song, I would film them sitting atop the cattails, singing and showing off their feathers. This specific area was bulldozed to make more urban sprawl. Other areas where the cattails exist are fed to the goats. I rarely see red-winged blackbirds anymore. Another reason I thought about cattails in relation to birds is because they grow tall, often right in the middle of a riparian area. To me, that seems like a great place for ducks and other aquatic birds to hide and build nests. And in a video I released a few years ago, I asked, when does the nesting process begin? Right when they start building? or do they need time to find a proper place to start building the nest? And if the goats have devastated the area, then birds are gonna have to move on and look for somewhere else, even if the plants do eventually grow back. We have the riparian area examples. We have the pond examples. The bottom line is an aquatic plant habitat and what animals want those aquatic plants to exist. So in that area that I showed the destruction of the goats, I got footage of incredible nests that were built inside of those cattails that were trampled. So of course the nest itself was trampled and I was just blown away by the nest. Just trying to imagine what it took to build that. And it was all brought to a tragic end. What I didn't expect was to realize that hummingbirds also build nests with the cattails. They don't build them on the cattails, they use the cattails. 
And again, it's not that I consider myself an expert. This is the power and importance of observation because I look at the plants and I look at the plants being cut short of their life cycle. And I think, well, wait a minute, this plant never even got to go to its seeding stage. How can we ever hope for native plants to be successful or to spread or flourish or even recover if they're being cut short before they even reach the reseeding stage? That was my initial thought. But what I came to learn by accident was that hummingbirds actually use the cattails as the cattails are in the seeding stage, as the cattails are blowing up, as the cattails are releasing their seeds. Hummingbirds use that as a part of their own nest building. Now, I really shouldn't have been surprised by this because I had already learned that hummingbirds use spider silk to build their nests. Did you know that hummingbird nests are pliable? They actually snugly fit the eggs when the eggs are small, but expand to fit the birds as they grow. It's incredible. So at one of the locations where the reeds were going to be destroyed, I decided to take one home and just see what happened. And I stuck it in my humble excuse for a yard. And what do you know? What did I catch on camera? Hummingbirds utilizing the cattail in its seeding stage. This footage is from April 18th of last year. The footage I opened up with was from November 13th of this year. Notice for the most part the deep green coloring and the solid dark brown tips. That's November. This is April 15th. Anna's hummingbirds lay their eggs in May, so they're gathering the nesting materials now. And guess what? Nature is providing nesting materials now. It took six months to go from the version I opened up the video with to get to this version of the plant. How many more months did it take to get to the November version? These plants need to be allowed to live year round in order to fulfill their purposes. You can't say, oh, well, it'll grow back at some point. That misses the entire ecological connection. And the reason I'm able to show you the cattails in this video is because this area doesn't get grazed by goats. The reason it doesn't get grazed by goats <laughs> We'll save that for another video, but it's not for scientific reasons. It's due to incompetence. It's an accidental oversight, and I don't want anyone to correct it. Well, that's the primary gist of the video. I'm going to have some bonus material coming up if you want to stick around for it. But what did you think of that? What did you think of how the needs of the bird aligned with the timing of the plant providing for those needs. I guess I'm getting super nerdy, but I think it's spectacular how those relationships develop. I also wanted to point out that the hummingbird using the fluff from the top of the older mature cattails doesn't take away from the red-winged blackbird. You can take all the fluff you want and there will still be a perch for the red-winged blackbird to sing and try to attract a mate. And whichever bird that was, I don't know how to identify that nest that was built to the side of a standing, or at least at one point in time, standing uh, cattail. Well, that can be done too. They all get to use the plant. That's just three birds in this one video that we realize needed that plant. And we're only talking about birds so far. Another reason I get so upset seeing these riparian areas devoured is because of the heat. The animals need that shade and those hiding places desperately. Trust me, I'm out there and I'm hiding in the shade. It's unpleasant. And even if it wasn't getting hotter, they still needed it. Show me what was accomplished here. The weeds, the yellow stuff, it's still there. But the green, important native plants have been decimated, trampled, clogging the waterway now, just 
a smashed version. They didn't even get rid of the fuel. If you're concerned about the biofuel, it's just ruined now. It's there, it's just ruined. And the creek bed itself and all the surrounding land just covered in non-native animal poop. Just a foreign feces covering everything. Now I switch from that creek and we look at this pond and when I posted the original video of the goats destroying it and the goats eating the willows and eating the Pacific poison oak and eating the oak trees and destroying the cattails and the sedges and the rushes people said oh well that, you know it's a tool it's a, it's good it's important and those plants will grow back this shows you the plants aren't fulfilling their purpose if they spend the entire year recovering just recovering from what the goats did to them only to be destroyed again. Everything else that needed those plants was deprived of those plants. And the only thing that the plant did was barely get back to where it was before it was destroyed. This last clip, this area I've been filming for several years and this is when there was no water at all in the creek bed. The drought, the heat, just devastating. And the animals needed that shelter so badly. And the goats just came and annihilated it. This year, there's water there. I don't know why there's water in there. Some sort of malfunction with the city's uh, watering system. But in any case, that's the only reason any of these plants still remain. And you can see the areas that the goats were able to get to. You go from something that looks kind of great to just decimated. And it's not because anyone was doing anything intelligent or observing closely or being scientific. The water simply stopped the goats from destroying everything. Thank God. This is a showy sedge. It's not the cattail, but it... It's the same thing. It represents the same thing. And the only reason these are still standing where the goats came through this year is because there was deep water surrounding this particular part. Everything else, just look right between there. Wiped out. Wiped out. Pan to the right. Wiped out. Wiped out. Wiped out. Wiped out. Wiped out. What a benefit. What a benefit. Destroyed. Trampled, destroyed, still here. You know, if you're going to jump to that ridiculous biofuel, fuel management, vegetation management excuse, it's here. It's just ruined. Sorry, I got angry again. Anyway, please let me know what you thought about this video, what you learned, what you agree with, what you don't agree with.